Since the beginning of 2020, the word vaccine has been greatly attached to the COVID-19 pandemic. However, pneumonia remains the single most infectious cause of mortality in children worldwide and accounts for up to 14% of deaths in children under the age of five. Now, experts are encouraging us to remember that there are other types of vaccinations that save lives, like pneumococcal uh, conjugate vaccines, that's PCVs. These are the jabs babies get as part of the government's expanded program on immunization at six weeks, 14 weeks, and nine months of age. Now also with the recent scare of a measles outbreak in South Africa, the importance of childhood vaccination has once again been brought to the fore. So for more on this, we are joined by Professor Prakash Mohan Jina. He's a pediatric pulmonologist and head of the Pediatric Intensive Care and Pulmonology Department at the University of KwaZulu-Natal. Prof, great to have you. Thanks so much for joining us. Good morning to you and the listeners. Thank you for having me. You know, there has been a lot of talk, particularly over the last two years, particularly 2020 and 2021, with uh, everyone being told to stay home and don't go anywhere and all of this stuff because of COVID. Seems that a lot of parents may have forgotten to get their children vaccinated. Is this true or is it just a perception that we've been led to understand? Uh, it's absolutely true, Leanne. Uh, we've, you know, we have targets. We have a very good immunization program in South Africa. If one of the success stories of the Department of Health is our concentration on immunization and vaccination. And during the last three years, we were, we, we, the target is normally achieving 90% vaccination for children who get to their childhood immunizations. We call them the expanded program of immunizations. And what happened over the last few year, um, years, because of COVID, we dropped that figure down to 80, 81%. Yeah. Uh, it's a concern because if we drop immunization, we put children at susceptibility to acquire infections. Mm. Uh, the good news is this last year, there has been a slight increase, but still we are not at the target that we need to be. Were we always at that target? I mean, prior to 2020, were, was South Africa up there? Were we hitting those targets? Yes, at periods of times we were hitting the targets and at periods of times, uh, due to multiple factors, we were missing the targets. Okay. Uh, some of these issues were related to how we collected data and other issues was related to issues of stockouts, issues about uh, lack of human resources to immunize people, uh, generally uh, trust in the vaccines. I think this was a major concern. When, I, when the original COVID outbreak occurred and when there was no cure for COVID, I thought very strongly that vaccinations will get a big boost because it was the only intervention that would actually produce and reduce the morbidity and mortality from COVID. And we've seen that, there's no question about it. But unfortunately, due to trust, due to, to many of factors uh, where people have lost the value of, uh, of the vaccines, uh, there's been a decline in the immunization services. Yeah. Now, let me just explain a few simple things. One is the normal process, when you get sick, you get an infection, your body produces an immunity. The, the, the virus or the bacteria goes into the body. And when it goes into the body, the body produces a reaction to it, and then you actually fight the infection and clear it. What we try to do as scientists is to take that same bacteria, virus, or any uh, infectious agent, find a safe haven for the vomit, like we find the antigen on the surface of the coronavirus, and take that because it's safe and then have an adjuvant, a substance that attaches to it that we give to the patient and that stimulates the immune response, making it believe that the virus is there. And in that way, we produce protection. Now, the important thing is, is that protection sustainable? The answer is with the initial situations when we had vaccines, that were just polysaccharides. And polysaccharides are usually carbohydrates. The protection was not sustained. And now when they've 
advance the science. And then you spoke about what you just spoke about, the conjugate vaccines that allowed us to produce better immunity and long memory. Yeah. And it worked on different cells. Yeah. Thank you. So, I mean, when, when we look at the, the kinds of vaccines, I mean, I highlighted in the introduction, you know, we know that when we do, we get at six weeks, 14 weeks, nine months of age, and, and then also at a, at a couple of years. W what are we finding happens? I mean, people, uh, do they just forget to take their kids to the clinics to get them vaccinated? And again, you brought up something very important is that um, hesitancy and the lack of trust. It's amazing how, because of COVID, everybody is now an expert on vaccinations. Before, we used to just have them done and say, well, that was that was the way it is now everybody's asking questions it's like hang on a second uh you know i think i know a little bit a little bit too much about vaccines now i don't think i want to have them done so let's talk about that where where are those massive gaps where we start seeing people not going for their vaccines so the first important gaps is as you know most women will have maternity leave even if they're working or not not working so oftentimes we have a very good uptake of the birth doses of BCG and OPV. And then at six weeks, 10 weeks and 14 weeks. But as you go down the line, as people get more involved with other activities in life, they often find that the uptake at nine months is actually much lower than at six months. Mm. And by a year, you find people actually forgetting to take the vaccines. Yeah. Now, this is a very important point, and we actually have utilized it. If you look at the schedules from other countries, like Western countries, you'll find that the schedules are very are different to ours. We try to get all these vaccines put in early as possible to increase that coverage. And the danger on one side of doing that is because you require the body to react to the substance, and the young baby doesn't have a, a, a profound immune system, it develops as he grows older, we find that we require these booster doses. So mm -hmm. oftentimes, you find that you give someone at six weeks and then at 10 weeks, at 14 weeks again, and nine months with, for the pneumococcal vaccine, but you might require a booster down the line because those va initial vaccines didn't have that massive immuni immunization response. So one of the other critical issues is, is vaccine availability. And we've been talking to, you know, a new, this, this beautiful plant that was built or that is there. It's able to produce vaccines and with the focus on COVID vaccines, obviously. But, you know, and then there was the stories. And I'm not sure what the situation looks like now, but there was a story we were talking to is the fact that not a single order had been placed for COVID vaccines. However, the world does not only revolve around COVID. And we, 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 we have to move our minds from that. The, the reality is, is that everything you're speaking about is there, it's not going to go away, and we need to produce these vaccines locally. That is also an issue, is the availability and also the access of getting out into communities with that. How are we faring on, this, on, on these two levels? I think we are making some progress, and we must uh, applaud some of the uh, assistance by government, by private enterprises like BioVac and uh, Pfizer and other pharmaceutical companies, uh, Aspen. These uh, companies, we call it a private-public partnership, are really important in actually developing the science. Now, remember, it's very important that, as you know, when we had the COVID outbreak, there was a scramble for vaccines across the world. And if you do not have your own manufacturing capacity, you're less likely to get the vaccines as rapidly as you need them, because as you know, if you let the epidemic uh, fester, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So if we have a, 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 a manufacturing site, uh, which actually assists in producing high quality vaccines, and that can only happen to tech transfer, not just packaging, but manufacturing the vaccines, this is important because then you're actually creating a market for further growth in the field. If there's a new illness that comes out and you've got this capacity and knowledge of how to do it, you actually are able to compete in the international market 
to produce these vaccines for the entire Africa. Mm. Mm. The second important point is that by doing so, you actually create jobs. And when you create jobs, you grow the economy and you grow the the gross domestic product of the country. So that is important because you do not look at these interventions as just, uh, you know, packaging facilities. You need to show them to be scientific, uh, producing new data, and actually being ready for the new epidemic that's down around the corner. So there is no question that uh, the country has taken bold steps in trying to encourage this relationship. And yeah. although we all focused on COVID, this episode, this uh, intervention had started long ago. And the plan, the very important thing was that the government's EPI program, which I spoke about, the expanded program of immunization, was embedded in these private manufacturing companies. So I think that's a very good state, yeah. state to be yeah. So, so finally, just to, to ask you, I mean, uh, if, if we get to the, the topic of monkeypox, which thankfully at the, at the moment, it seems that it's not, a, it's not a, a massive issue here for us right now. But in terms of the vaccinations that are needed uh, to ensure that that is not, a, not an issue for us. And also, we still know that, you know, with, with regard to the COVID vaccine, it's still 12 years and over. Where are we in allowing the younger population to start receiving the vaccine and also in terms of monkeypox for South African children? Thank you so much. Uh, so monkeypox is from this chicken uh, smallpox group of vaccines, right? And um, to answer the question, they are, these are variants of the smallpox uh, virus. And in the States, they're already utilizing uh, variants of the smallpox vi- virus in vaccinating uh, for monkeypox. The, the big difference between monkeypox and coronavirus is the fact that this is usually an innocuous disease, monkeypox. Uh, it's uh, not something like corona, which we had such high mortality and mobility from. Mm, mm. And therefore, it hasn't been highlighted to the extent that it needed to be highlighted. The other important point about monkeypox is the fact that we, we probably got it in the, year, in, the, in the society, but because it's a self-limiting condition, it's actually are being, there are guidelines now to test more and more for these. They are probably circulating, but because it's uh, self-limiting, uh, I don't think it's receiving the attention uh, that it, it would receive if it was killing patients. All right. And okay. the issue around... The, the issue around coronavirus and, and vaccines for young children, I must thank, uh, I mean, there are vaccines, the vaccines have been tried in young kids. Uh, the Pfizer vaccine for, uh, for coronavirus, SARS-CoV-2, okay. has been tried in young kids uh, from older than six years of age. Okay. And they are available. And I think uh, it's a matter of actually, uh, you know, creating this. The problem it is similar to the influenza vaccine. Okay. And we've heard that there's changes with the vaccine, mutations, as you saw from the oh, Omicron Delta. All right, Prof, I'm sorry, I have, to, I have to interrupt you. I know there's a lot to talk about, but I'm going to have to leave it there. We've got to say goodbye to our viewers just in terms of time. But uh, Professor Prakash Mohanjina, uh, a pediatric pulmonologist, talking to us about the importance of vaccination. Sorry we couldn't get to that final answer, but I think we've got a lot packed in.